Fans, John Erardi, Greg Rhodes, and Greg Gages took on a huge task for a new book, uh, Baseball Revolutionaries. Uh, they went back into the archives to tell the personal stories of the 1869 uh, Red Stockings and their contribution to making baseball famous. And uh, John and Greg Gages joined us this morning to go over the book project. And I'm, I'm sorry that Greg Rhodes couldn't join us this right. morning. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, this book it's pretty incredible. I, you know, I inspected the uh, uh, some of the historical photos right. uh, and some of the comparisons, that sort of thing. I was really impressed with the narratives, uh, with you. telling the story of them slicing through these New York teams right. and the Philadelphia teams when they started that historic 1869 uh, season. Right. It's the team that made baseball famous, and this is the city that made baseball famous. And in June of 1869. That was the road trip that made Cincinnati famous. They went on a 20-game road trip, went 20-0, and came back to a big celebration. We've got a picture of the ticket in the book of the first big game back here. And it was just, it was just to the moon after that. Yeah, you included really some colorful detail that really put you in that spot. Uh, in talking about the young women when they would step over puddles, yeah. they would raise their skirts <laughs> and show the red stockings. Scandalous. Uh, scandalous. Uh, scandalous. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> but in particular, it showed that the team was not like some some uh, a machine. Uh, the catcher actually played with hurt hands. Yes, uh, Doug Allison was the catcher and like everybody else then played barehanded yeah so even though the pitchers were pitching underhanded catching hundreds of baseballs barehanded in a game plus with no equipment foul tips you know uh foul balls and this picture was one of our favorites we found this in the collection of the smithsonian uh doug allison retired to the washington dc area and this is what his hands look like after 10 years of uh playing baseball without a glove and uh, and he called his hands monuments to work well done yeah but I, he obviously took a beating and if you go through the accounts every third game oh his thumb was split open or he took a foul ball in the jaw and right. and uh you know so Johnny Bench can relate to oh, yeah. uh, Doug yeah. Allison and the beating yeah. the catcher's yeah. take. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, you tell the story about how uh, these were all young men, they were handsome guys, uh, and so there was a certain attachment to it, how fans really all over the baseball world were really uh, paying attention to what these guys were doing and that sure. sort of thing. But it was more than just the team uh, 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 being the first uh, fully professional team. Uh, they they uh, actually uh, uh, made uh, – uh, certain kinds of advancements that hadn't been seen before, like that transcontinental trip. Yeah, it was amazing because the railroad had just been finished. They pounded the Golden Spike at Promontory, Utah in May of 1869. Four months later, these guys are riding the train. And we found all kinds of great photos of the train trip west. It took about 10 days to get there from Omaha, Nebraska, and they just wiped everybody out on the west coast. But it was amazing because they could have gone back to New York and played again, but they decided, let's go to the west coast. It was 100 years, John, before another major league team went to the west coast, 1958. Okay, now we don't have a lot of time left, but I have to get in about uh, uh, George and Harry Wright. Uh, they were kind of the geniuses behind the start of the team. Talk about, uh, especially Harry Wright, uh, uh, what their contributions I'm were. I'm going to let uh, Greg take Harry. Okay. okay. Harry Wright uh, was the reason that they were so dominant because he was not only the first manager in baseball, he basically invented baseball fundamentals. You know, cutoff plays, how to turn a double play, backing up bases on overthrows, calling, you know, who's going to take the ball. And, uh, and Harry was just way ahead of his time as a manager. He invented relief pitching. Um, he knew to, he shifted his fielders. That's a big, big discussion topic now. He was shifting his fielders in 1869. Well, I wish I had yeah. so much more time to talk to you about, about these things. We, trust me, we only mm -hmm. scratched the surface right. with, with this book. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if people want to get it, where's the best place? Amazon's a great place. It's at uh, Found Square of Booksellers downtown, uh, Joseph Beth. Uh, we're just all over the place. There's a beautiful map that goes with the book people can get, and uh, I think it's going to be a big hit because it's the 150th anniversary of the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, absolutely, and this is a great keepsake. If you if you enjoy the Cincinnati Reds or just the history of baseball, this is a great addition to your thank collection. You. All right, thank you, John. Uh, John, Greg, thank you both for coming in. Uh, it is 9:47. We'll be right. Back.